In this tutorial we're going to model a NEMA 17 motor. So a NEMA 17 is a very popular stepper motor that's used in the makerspace, especially on things like 3D printers. The 17 of NEMA 17 refers to the size of the motor, in this case meaning 1.7 inches square as defined in the NEMA standard along with the other dimensions. However, not all the dimensions are provided, for example the length of the motor is variable depending on the required torque. So in this tutorial we're going to look at using the FreeCAD Part Design Workbench and the FreeCAD Spreadsheet Workbench to be able to dynamically change the dimensions of the model. Uh, for that we'll need to create a spreadsheet, so we'll choose the Spreadsheet Workbench, create a spreadsheet and then double click on the spreadsheet to edit it. So this is the same as a spreadsheet in any other software that you've used before. It's a bunch of cells grouped in columns and rows and you can lay the information out any way that you find works for you. Um, so for me I'm going to choose to lay everything out in columns. So I'm going to create three column headers, name, value and description. Then I'll pop populate this with information to define the dimensions of the motor. Uh, so the first one I'm going to do is a dimension for the body. Uh, the dimension here is 42.30 and I'll give it a description to explain what that is. Um, body dimension. Type in is difficult today. Uh, so that I'm going to expand the row a little bit. Um, so we can see the text and then the last step before these values can be used in the part design workbench is to assign a unique name to the value and we do that by right clicking on the cell choosing the properties and assigning an alias so this one is dim body i like to prefix the alias with the word dim for dimension uh, this lets us um, find the dimension easier when we're using expressions in the part design workbench and you'll see that later on. So for now we'll click OK. We'll notice that the cells turn yellow which means it has an alias assigned and at this point I'm going to save. Then we'll switch to the part design workbench. We'll switch to the model. Choose the model tab. Create a body and we'll create the first sketch on the XY plane. The first sketch is going to be um, a rectangle or a square and we'll choose the two diagonally opposite nodes, the center node, uh, apply a symmetry constraint. We'll make these two edges the same length and then we'll apply a dimension to one of the edges. And rather than typing in a dimension, I'm going to choose the formula editor and I'll input an expression. So the expression is spreadsheet followed by the name of the alias for the value that we require. And because I started my alias with a keyword dim, by pressing D, the list is populated with all the values that begin with a D. So I can press down to select the one I want. The results then populated with the correct dimension. We'll choose OK and OK again. The dimensions turn orange to show it's a calculated value. The sketches turn green to show it's fully constrained. So we'll click close and save. I'll then switch to the spreadsheet and continue populating the rest of the dimensions for the motor. So the next one will be a dimension for the hole centers. Now the value for this one is 31 millimeters. Give it a description and I'll set the alias. And rather than watching me key in each of these values, um, by the magic of video, these will be finished in three, two, one. And there we go. As the great robot Lenny once said, that was easy. Um, so the next steps now to switch back to the model tab and continue with the modeling. So we'll select the sketch we previously made, we'll add a pad, uh, rather than using the dimensions we'll choose the formula editor, select a dimension from the spreadsheet, again type in dim 
all the alias dimensions are populated and we can find the body length. So choose OK. Select OK again. And then we'll switch to the isometric view. Fit and save. So now I want to add a pocket to the sides of the motor to define the shape of the sides. So to do that, I'm going to choose one of the faces, create a sketch. And for this sketch, we want to make a cutout that um, removes material in the center of the body and in the end caps at the same time. So to do that, I'm going to create two rectangles, something like that. I'll then trim away the lines that aren't required using the trim tool. Press escape to close the trim tool and start to constrain the sketch. So we'll choose these points and give it a symmetry about the vertical center line. And the same here. I'll then start moving nodes in the sketch to see what needs constraining. So it looks okay. Uh, we'll move this side in to drag it into shape a little bit. So we'll then start to dimension the sketch by selecting the two outer nodes and giving it an overall length. So for this, again, we can use the spreadsheet. And to ensure we get a clean pocket, we always want this dimension to be wider than the model. So we'll times it by 1.1, making it 10% oversize. We'll select OK and OK. That dimensions turn orange to show it's a calculated value. And we can then start positioning in the vertical. So we'll choose this point and dimension to the origin. And again, we'll choose the spreadsheet. Type dim. I want to select the end length. So choose OK. I'll then dimension the cutout by selecting these two nodes, giving it a vertical dimension. We'll dimension this at spreadsheet, dim end, divided by four, select OK. And then we can make those two lines equal. We'll choose this line and set the length, the horizontal length. So for this, we'll enter an expression of the spreadsheet dim body minus two times the end length. Select OK and OK. So we've got one degree of freedom left. If we click on that, it'll show us where. So this line is currently unconstrained. So I'll select this line and apply a vertical constraint and apply an expression of the body length minus two times the end length. OK, and OK again. So the sketch is now turned green to show it's fully constrained. So we'll click close. We'll save. We'll then create the pocket with a depth of 1.5 millimeters. Click OK and save. And then we need to replicate this pocket on all sides of the motor. So to do that, we can select the pocket and then use a polar pattern. Um, so we'll select the Z axis. Uh, that's added an occurrence to the back. So if we add two more occurrences, we should get one on each side. That's OK, we have. We'll select OK to accept and save. Um, so now go on to start dimensioning the shaft and the mounting features. So to do that, I'm going to create a sketch on the XY plane. Select OK. So this sketch is being created looking from the top down, which means we can't see the origin. So we can either orbit to the origin so we can see it. Or if we go back to the top view, we can use the section tool. Um, so for this sketch, I'm going to draw a circle from the origin and then dimension it. 
again using the spreadsheet, we'll choose the value of the lip diameter. Uh, but we need to put the radius in here, so we'll divide that by two. Choose OK, OK. Exit the sketch, and then we'll create a pad. Uh, for the dimension, we'll use the spreadsheet. Uh, the dimension we want is the lip length. Click OK. That's not created the pad, so we'll reverse it. Yep, OK. Choose OK to accept and save. The next feature I want to add is the motor shaft. So that's following the same process that we've just done. So I'll create a sketch on the XY plane, choose OK. Um, section view will create a circle. We'll dimension the circle. So we use the formula editor to enter an expression of spreadsheet. Shaft diameter, so that's divided by two to get the radius. I will choose OK. Close the sketch. And we'll create a pad. And the dimension for this one is the shaft length. Choose OK. Accept that. Oops, it's not actually created it again there, so we'll need to reverse the pad. So we'll double click on it. Reverse the pad, click OK to accept, save. OK, I'd now like to add the mountain holes to the model. So to do that, I'm going to create a new sketch on the XY plane. Click OK. Turn on the section view. And I'm going to draw a rectangle or a square. Right click to close the rectangle tool. I'm going to choose the two diagonally opposite points, the center point, and apply a symmetry constraint. I'll then select two adjacent edges and give them an equality constraint. And then we'll add a dimension to the top edge. So this is the dimension from the whole center. So we'll use the spreadsheet, then whole centers. Choose OK. I've modeled this square for construction geometry, so we'll drag a box over it to select it, and then we'll convert that to construction geometry, and then we'll use it to position the holes. So I'll draw four circles, one for each hole. Um, holding control, I'll select each circle and apply a constraint to them all. So at this point, I've been asked if I want to share the same radius for all the selected elements, to which I'll answer yes, because I do. And then from the formula editor, we can type the expression for the spreadsheet. I select the whole diameter and divide it by two to get the radius. So we'll click OK. Ah, I was expecting all the circles to turn green and to show the sketch was constrained but we're still showing two degrees of freedom. Um, we must have a rogue circle. So let's click on the two degrees of freedom. And there it is. We've got a, uh, a stray circle. So we'll select the circle and a point to constrain it to. We'll select a coincident constraint. It's now turned green. We're fully constrained and we can click close. Uh, we'll save and then we'll create a pocket. reversed and then I will use an expression to get the whole depth. Click OK. We'll then switch to the front view, fit and save. That's the basic geometry of the motor now complete so we can go ahead and start to add a few other fancy features. Um, the styles of these motors vary by manufacturer. Uh, but a, a number of the ones I have feature a negative fillet along this edge. Um, so we can create that by um, creating a negative um, sweep or loft along that edge. 
Um, so to do that, we'll turn on the origin, select the XY plane and create a new datum. And then we can offset the datum in the Z direction using our spreadsheet. And that's the dimension and length. Okay, that done, we'll select OK. We'll turn off the origin and then we'll select the datum and create a new sketch. So for this sketch, I'm going to draw a circle to create the inverse fillet. And then we'll constrain that back to the origin. I'm using an expression of half the body dimension. Click OK to accept. And that's now line the circle up um, with the edge of the body. And we need to do the same in the vertical. And for that, we can edit the existing dimension and give it a name of fillet offset. Click OK. We can then add the vertical dimension. And as the expression, we can use the constraint from the current sketch. And then we can type in the dimension fillet offset. We've got the result changed to the correct value. We can select OK. OK again. We can then dimension the circle using the expression of spreadsheet dim n length divided by two. Click OK and OK again. Um, the sketch is now fully constrained, so we'll click close and save. So we'll orbit round so the sketch is visible. And then ensuring we've got the sketch selected, we'll create a sweep. And as a path, we'll choose the edge, select OK. I'll then save. And then as before, we can replicate this same feature on all edges by selecting a feature and choosing a polar pattern. So we'll pattern around the Z axis. And we need four occurrences. Just have a quick look. Yep, it's created them all. So we'll choose OK. We'll switch to the isometric view. Fit and save. We don't need to see the datum anymore, so I can select it and turn it off by pressing the space bar. And as the final step for this model, I'd like to add a chamfer to all the edges. And I can do that by selecting each edge, holding control, and walking around the model and choosing each edge I'd like to add the chamfer to. Can then add the chamfer then dimension it using an expression uh, dimension body chamfer. There we go, we'll click OK. I'll switch to the front view, uh, rotate the model around so it's on its side. That's the model of the motor now complete, but as I discussed at the start of this video, the length of these motors can vary depending on the torque application. And we can address that by changing the values in the spreadsheet. So we'll switch back to the spreadsheet. We'll change the length to 150 to make a long high torque motor. We can see the motor's now grown. And if we selected a shorter pancake style motor, the very short ones, so we say 30 millimeters long, we can change to that as well. So as you can see, using a spreadsheet gives us a really convenient way to build parametric models uh, with all the dimensions in one place where they can be changed to suit the design requirements. And that's us done, so we'll fit and save. So there we have it. We've created a parametric model of a NEMA 17 motor that can be updated to suit any design requirements that we may have. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If there's anything you'd like to see in future videos, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.